welcome back to my channel. Oh my gosh, I felt like January dragged and dragged and I was not the only one who thought so because there were a bunch of people on Twitter talking about it to the point that it even started trending. I am happy that February is a short month. I can't imagine if we had another long month. Now, if it was spring, summer or fall, I would not mind having two long months in a row, but I am someone who does not like the cold and I have winter here and I do not want another long cold winter. So I have been working from home for over 10 years. I started working from home when my kids were little. So my son was about eight and my daughter was about six. So elementary school age. Therefore, I've had a reasonable amount of time learning how to avoid distractions, how to avoid feeling so isolated and other things like that. So I have learned some things that work for me and some things that did not and some things that I have noticed while working from home and so I thought that I would share that with you. And this is for someone who is starting to work from home or someone who is about to start working from home or is about to ask their boss, hey, can you give me a chance to work from home? Which I think in many professions, it's okay to work from home. If you work from home, please share in the comments below your tips on things that you do to make sure that working from home makes sense for you, you keep that work-life balance, you're productive, and you're able to be happy and satisfied with your life as a whole. So the first thing that you should do is set up an office. It doesn't have to be this fancy office with a bunch of pictures, a bunch of pretty little things, big table. You can have a little table in a corner like me. As you see, I'm in my bedroom. I have a small table next to my bed and I have the essentials. I have a chair with like a little pad to help with my back as I sometimes have back issues, a place to have my laptops. Yes, I need more than one laptop for work as well as things as you know, my notebooks, my pens and so forth. The second thing is having a morning routine. Everyone should have a morning routine, but I feel like it's very important when you work from home because, you know, if you're working from home and you don't have a commute and you don't really have to get dressed up, then you can, if you're someone who is more of a late sleeper, you will go sleep until you have your meeting. If you have a meeting at 11 o'clock, then you won't wake up until 11 o'clock. So it's always good to have a morning routine because you want to have a flow. And that's one of the things about working in an office. You do have to have a certain time that you have to wake up, commute and get into the office and so this is the way to have the same kind of routine instead you're at home so I wake up at 7 in the morning 7 works for me I have tried waking up at 5 30 6 30 that is too early for me 7 for some reason is when I naturally wake up so 7 works for me Therefore, play around with the times and find the time that makes sense for you it does not have to be 7 it does not have to be 5 30 but don't try to make it after nine or 10, unless you're someone who is like working at night, then of course you're gonna wake up later. But if you're someone who's working during the day and so forth, try to wake up before nine in the morning. Next thing I do is I turn on my Calm app and I do the meditation of the day. There's always different meditations during the day and that's what I love about the Calm app, but there's also Headspace and other meditation apps that you can use. Or if you're someone who's really good and does not need a meditation app, then just meditate. I mean, that is how I get started. I have a little mantra that I tell myself. It's really simple. It's just everything will be okay. And for some reason it works because then I can tell that any stress that I had in my body just leaves and throughout the day, I'm able to deal with the challenges of the day. Depending if I'm going to the gym or not, if I'm not going to the gym, then I jump in the shower. I do have a Bluetooth speaker in the shower. I also bought one for my kids to have in their shower and I turn on my podcast and I listen to them while I take a shower. I then put on some makeup. If you have read my blog, you will know that that is one of my New Year's resolution. I kind of slacked in the looking put together department. So that is something that I'm working on. And so I make sure to put on some makeup, do something with my hair, and then I'm ready to go downstairs. I then go downstairs and then I put on the coffee machine. And then while that's going on, I make sure that I feed the dogs and give them fresh water. So I'm currently trying to lose weight. So I'm trying intermittent fasting. So usually on the days that I don't work out, I usually skip breakfast and I'll start eating around like 11 o'clock. So I usually don't eat breakfast in the morning. After the dogs eat, I 
right now because it's freezing, I put on my coat, put on their leashes, and I take them out for a walk so they can do their business as well as get some exercise. And that helps me because then they're more calm throughout the day and I don't have to keep saying, relax, relax, or shh, whenever I'm in a meeting. And so that helps out a lot, you know. So that's one tip for dog owners is make sure your dogs are exercised. After the walk, we will come upstairs I will get the laptops going and while that's going I will check my planners I have two I have one for my everyday life as well as for my career and then I have the other one for my blog as well as my true crime podcast that I have and so I will look at those create a to-do list also with things like errands I have to run things I have to buy and so forth and then I will put that one on my desk so I know the things that I have to do throughout the day. So I got new windows and I love them and I love the blinds that I have. They're the cellular shade blinds and so I just quickly put them up and I let some sunshine in. So after that my morning routine is done and I am ready to go. I am ready to start the day, start working, start having my meetings and anything else that I have to do during the day. My next tip is avoid the television. So when I was younger I used to do my homework in front of the television and it was like white noise for me and so I'm someone who does need something going on in the background when I'm working but I have realized that the older I get the less I can do if the television is on because you know it's visual so if it, something's going on or some I'm listening to it and then someone says something that triggers me to stop and look at the screen so that is something that is not working for me and believe me for a majority of people turn off that television what I do is I usually listen to music I have Pandora so I have a bunch of stations that I listen to as well as like my audiobooks and my podcasts but I, one thing about the audiobooks and the podcast is it depends on what I'm working on because if it's something that I'm really focusing on, I will barely listen to the podcast and audiobook because I'm very good at focusing. So for me, the majority of the time what makes sense is listening to music because it's something that's in the background, but I don't have to pay attention to it. There are sometimes, I'm not going to lie, that there's like one or two songs that make me stop what I'm doing and start singing away, but that, you know... It's something that if you love music, who doesn't do that? So turn that TV off. I am someone who's obsessed with YouTube. It's something that I started watching with my daughter and now I have a bunch of YouTube channels that I'm subscribed to it and I can sit there and watch and watch and watch. So I make sure that I do that when the day is done. So the next tip is how to coexist with kids and dogs in the house. So it really depends on your kid's age. You can't expect a baby or a toddler to understand that mommy's working or daddy's working and they're going to keep quiet. That is never going to fly, especially with a toddler. So for babies and toddlers, I do think that you should, you know, have someone help you take care of them while you're working from home. I don't know how people do it if they do that they can have they can take care of a baby and a toddler while they're working because I would be pulling my hair out. But I also had a very active toddler. My son was super active. If that boy was a toddler right now, I wouldn't be able to even be doing what I'm doing right now because he would be all over the place. So yeah, for baby and toddlers, try to find someone to help you with them. I know daycare costs are insane. And so try to see if maybe a family member can help you out. I mean, it really depends on your circumstance. If you have a preschooler, which is around like four or five and older, they should be able to comprehend that you are working at the moment. So at those points that they should start learning how to play quietly and entertain themselves. If you're going to work from home, you cannot have your kids expecting you to entertain them and do everything for them. You need to start teaching your kids how to be more self-sufficient and learning how to play quietly so you can get some work done. And this is usually if you're in a meeting, that is something that I taught my kids. When I'm in meetings, I used to have them next to me and I was like, shh, it's time to start playing quietly so I can get through this meeting and my kids, you know, they were, like I said, eight or six, and they learned that when I'm on a call, they needed to learn to keep their mouths quiet and play. And I sometimes would play with them if it was a meeting that I did not, was not really the one speaking, I was just participating. But we learned 
to keep our mouth shut even if I was on mute because there's times and I've seen other people do it and I have done it where you think you're on mute and you really are not so you have to make sure that mute button is on and you guys are keeping it. It gets easier the older they get but I have teenagers right now and even now I have to remind them to keep it down when they're playing video games or they're FaceTiming with their friends and they learn right away when I'm like keep it down they sh quiet down they close their door if they are facetiming or they start whispering on the video games or whatever but yeah keep it down when i'm in a meeting because nobody wants to hear the background noise like one of my professors said in my mba school they were like hey we get that you guys have families and stuff like that but we don't want to hear all that background noise and i agree with that i don't want to hear the background noise either so if i don't want to hear it then i should pay the same respect and not have other people hear my background noise. With my dogs, I make sure that I exercise them enough and I also train them to understand what the word relax mean. When I say relax, those dogs stop what they're doing, they lay down and they keep it quiet. Because especially my German Shepherd, like she's very loud because she's a big dog, you know? So I've had to teach her relax, believe me, it was hard. It took me like a few weeks. That was something we learned in training class and I was like, there is no way this is going to work. And it actually does work. So yeah, teach your dogs relax so they know or whatever word makes sense for you. It doesn't have to be relax, but for me it's relax because I say it a lot anyway. So if I say relax, my dogs lay down and they know that they need to pipe it down because sometimes they'll be playing and stuff and they're like, bo, 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 and I'm like, uh, uh, relax. <laughs> they just lay down. So that's something that will help you with your dogs. Teach them a cue word where they know that they have to keep it quiet. Now, if I'm not in meetings, I don't care if my kids or my dogs are being loud because I am someone who can really focus. I have a friend and she makes fun of me because she's like, how can you focus so much? Because you can be right in front of me or be talking to me. And if I'm focusing on something that I'm doing, I don't see you. I don't hear you. So that is something that you also need to start working on is being someone who can really focus and not be distracted if there's noise in the background. So learn how to focus. So next tip is take breaks. I am someone who can work for hours without taking a break. I will forget to eat. I will forget to even go to the bathroom. And I know other people who are the same way. If they don't have something alerting them to take a break, they will work for hours and hours and hours. That is something you need to be aware of when you're working from home, take breaks. So for me, what works is the Pomodoro technique. I do 25 minutes of working and then I take a five minute break and that can just be like stretching, getting out of my chair, petting the dogs, whatever. I take that five minute break. There are times that I don't want to do it and then I have to tell myself like, girl, get out of the damn chair and go do something. Get away from work because like I said, it is sometimes very hard. Just take the break, get away from that computer screen, go do something, whether it's getting some chocolate. I'm someone who loves chocolate, so that's why I said that. Pet the dogs, kiss the kids, do something that will get you away from work so you can mentally be ready for the next block. So one of the great things about working in an office is the human interaction. You're able to talk to your coworkers in the lunch room. You're able to like have them around you. So you're chit chatting. So that's one of the things that does suck about working from home. And I did know someone who actually stopped working from home and went to another company where she could actually be in the office because she was a very social person and she was feeling very lonely and very isolated. At least once a day, get out of the house, go to a coffee shop, go to the library, go to the store, do something where you can have like, even if it's just small talk with people, meet a friend up for lunch, meet a friend up for coffee, just do something to get out of the house. Make sure that you're at least finding ways to socialize. So another tip is make sure you have a shut off time. For me, it depends on the day. So there are times that it's 4 p.m. There are other times that it's 5 p.m but make sure you have a time where you're like, I am done with work. Because what happens is you can go hours and hours and you can even go to like 9 p.m., 10 p.m. working. And my previous job, I was doing that and I finally had to tell myself, shut it off. So one thing I have learned is you teach people how you wanna be treated 
If your manager is someone who expects you to constantly be 24 seven answering emails and so forth, you need to set that expectation. I'm sorry, but I am not going to be replying to emails after a certain time. And if he or she has an issue with that, that's on them because they can't force you to do that. If you feel like they're overstepping and they're starting to like mess with your career, then it's time to move on. So shut off that laptop and don't think about work until the next day. Don't talk about it. Don't even think about it. If you find yourself thinking about it, make sure you tell yourself, stop. Think about something that has nothing to do with work. So those are some of the tips that have helped me work from home. Please let me know in the comments below if this was helpful and what other type of videos you would like to see on working from home. Believe me, I have plenty of experience working from home and I can help you get the best out of it. Make sure you subscribe. I post a video every week. Hit that notification bell and I will talk to you next week. Bye.